Hi, we're back at DIY German Air Cool Garage, although today it should be called Dirt Lot Garage. Uh, I'm Phil Geckler, your host. Um, so today our goals are to put this transmission in there. Uh, my other goal for today is to not say basically and always. Uh, been getting some comments, so thank you, Leon, and uh, let's get this thing in there. <laughs> Right, we're here at the transmission. Um, I want to show there's four places basically where this transmission mounts to the, the bus. You've got the end of your swing axles here and it attaches to the spring plates that we've put in. Uh, you've got your rear engine mounts back here, you've got your front engine mount here, and then your shift coupler. So uh, we're going to be sliding this into position. All right, so the first thing we have to do to get the transmission lined up is to put the front motor mount and the shift coupler uh, made it up. So you wanna make sure to get these lined up first. Now, um, once those are on, we'll then attach the rear motor mounts. Again, motor mounts being here. I keep calling them motor mounts, but they're on the transmission. Because Volkswagen is one of those odd ducks where the engine is actually bolted onto the transmission. Engine doesn't have any motor mounts on it. It's relying on the transmission suspension points to basically keep everything hooked up and uh, stable. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit different than a Porsche, but it uh, works good and that's why the engines come out so quick. All right, now it's time to get the transmission in the car. Uh, we first have to get the uh, nose cone or the shift coupler over this rail here. Almost. All right, now I'm kind of trying to see where those things are lining up. Everything's pretty much there. Now once we're over the top of this knuckle, we can use the arms to hold it up. Let's see, the transmission just hangs on those motor mount shafts. All right, this is a little bit of a manhandle job right here. You want to use your knee underneath the engine mount here and then just rock this thing back. Keep pushing it forward until you can capture that motor mount. Almost, there it is. Hi, hi, hi. All right, now that we've got the front motor mount on there, you want to make sure that your, your axles are twisted in the right position and kind of in, in place so you can slide. They slide right in now. Uh, but this other one I need to kind of do a little bit of playing with to get it to come over. So you will have to make sure these things are lined up a little bit. All right, so I put the transmission on the front motor mount. I've got the rear motor mount to put on correctly. I've got the other spring plate on, on the other side on the proper side of the, the uh, swing axle, but this side seems a little tight. I just, you know, it's, it's a nice heavy duty spring plate. So what I'm gonna do to pull this over is basically just, you know, use a, a, a ratchet strap and that should give me the mechanical advantage to get that going and pulled into the proper position. So now we're getting our space, a little more. All right, there it is. Uh, you can see I've got all my hardware here. I've uh, gone ahead and sanded down and cleaned up all the front motor mount bolts. We're gonna be taking or attaching our ground strap to one of these bolts here. And uh, if it's clean, it's gonna make a better ground and uh, just makes everything work better. Okay, before we get started by putting the big motor mounts on here, I just want to get one of the front motor mounts just started just to make sure that it doesn't slip off while we're jimmying the rear end up so that uh, we can get the rear motor mounts on. So there we go. I've got one just started finger tight, and that should be good enough. All right, so we're going to put the big uh, motor mount bolts in the back here. We're going to use a jack to get the tranny up because it's uh, a little stiff. Well, you can see we're lining up with those holes pretty good. I'll take a little screwdriver here. I'm gonna move it over. Get that started. See if this one will work over right here. All 
I grabbed my uh, 27 millimeter socket. Here we are. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten these motor mounts down. Uh, they need to be pretty tight, so you definitely want to give them some torque. There you go. That'll work. Alright, as I mentioned before, I put the transmission in without anything on it. Wanted to save weight, make it less cumbersome. So now it's time to put the starter on to the transmission. You can see here that this uh, starter's got an interesting welded little threaded uh, nut on here, or screw actually. Uh, what you'll find is that when you're trying to put the starter on when the engine's on, you can't really get your hands back here to hold this nut or stop it from spinning. So it's in practically impossible sometimes to mount this upper engine or motor mount uh, and the transmission together. So anyway, people make these and you know, or you can buy them anywhere, but definitely want to have one of those uh, on your starter. So starter just goes up back behind here. Something like that. There we are. So take our nut and just basically nut it down. We'll put the top one in here in a second. Like so. All right, so we have the uh, starter mounted in here pretty much. Now I'm just gonna put a couple nice snug turns on the lower starter mount before we move on to the electrical. Uh, you can see the wires hanging out right here, well, both of them red. Both of them connect to the same pole. Uh, and you can see how they just naturally kind of mate like that. Um, we should be good to go. Uh, we also have another uh, this is the actual starter wire that comes off of the key, basically, that engages the solenoid, which basically slips right back on here. And it's pretty simple. There's not a lot going on back there. So anyway, put this in there, like so. Take our nut. And we'll tighten that up from the other side when we're doing the motor mount. Again, we uh, talked about the grounding strap. You know, we've got both power going to the starter with no ground, which seems a bit odd. But what happens is, is that the starter grounds through the transmission. Transmission grounds to the chassis through this strap, is what we talked about before. So once all these wires are on here from the positive side, it only engages when you hit the key on the starter. So that's why there's no big ground on, on the actual starter. But there is on the transmission, so the motor and transmission are all grounded through that transmission strap right here. Now it's time for the clutch cable. Um, you take the, the wing nut off the end. You fish it through the hole here in the tranny. There it is. Make sure the cable pops into its correct place, which it can be a little funky sometimes, so the way it likes to just move around. There we go. See, I just needed a better position. Now, move that into place. Lean that on there. Get your fingers out of the way so when it snaps shut, you don't pinch them, which I've done many times. All right, there we go. Clutch cable's on there. Obviously not adjusted. We'll adjust the clutch when we put the motor in, get it all started up. Okay, what I've uh, figured out is that, uh, as you know, everybody knows, we got these uh, spring plates, adjustable spring plates from Busboy. This was a little snug. I couldn't quite get this to move around as easy as I wanted to to get the, the uh, nuts in there. But what I found is just by releasing the spring plate tension here, uh, I'm able to get this to move nice and freely. Obviously, we're going to have to do our ride height after the wheel's on or all, all that kind of stuff. But for this little uh, installation, that makes it really nice and easy. So now that this is loosened up, I can come in here. I can slide this around a little bit and uh, line up my nuts pretty, nuts and bolts pretty easily. Okay, we're uh, just putting in our last uh, piece of hardware here on the, uh, the, the swing arm and the, the uh, spring plate. You can see again, we've got a slot here. 
uh, where our, our bolt and nut uh, go through. Um, again, this slot is important to know that uh, from alignment perspective, it allows you to move the swing axle front and back so you can get proper alignment. When I'm done with this project, I'm definitely going to be taking in for a four wheel alignment. But anyway, your grade eight bolt, you got your flat washer, goes in from the back. And again, I can't believe how nicely that goes through with that spring freight released. Again, another flat washer, lock washer, and then bolt. So then once we get this tightened up on here, pretty tight, again, it's a suspension point that uh, you know, has a lot of torque going through there. It's got some good torque on it, so you definitely want to make it nice and tight. Uh, and then once we're done with this, we will then put the shock on. Okay, now it's time to put the shock on. I got fancy KYB gas charge, like sports car fancy shocks here. You can see you can't push them close because they do have a gas charge in them. So I need to get them up onto this stud. So just take your little jack and uh, put it underneath here. Make sure you got some some stud coming out underneath here so it's easy to capture. Let's see, just do it like so. Wrestle it over. Less, a little more. And then, once you get it on there, you take your hammer. Ta-da! Well, then we hammer for this side. Get out of the way. We take our, again, our flat washer our lock washer and our nut and then just tighten them on down all right we finished up over here on this side now we're about ready to move over to the other side and do everything we've just completed here uh, you might notice that there's some stuff hanging down here it seems to be incomplete. Yeah, you're right This is the emergency brake cable. Uh, we've got brake lines back here and things like that um, We're definitely going to do that project uh, But that's going to be at a later time before the engine goes in All right, we're up here at the front engine mount and we're going to be attaching the ground strap and the engine mount to the chassis here and you can see again nice clean washer washer goes on then the strap Again, the strap's been cleaned, looks all nice. Put it on like that. And then we put on another nice and clean washer. And then we put the bolt on. Uh, so that's our ground. And then we go ahead and do, we basically take the other uh, cleaned washer and bolt and put it on the other side. And we'll tighten all that down. All right, so I've tightened up the motor mounts uh, with the 17, one of them having the grounding strap on it. Now I need to take the grounding strap and mount it to the transmission. I'm going to attach it to one of these transmission bolts. Not this one, but one up just outside a camera shot here. It's a little bit more convenient. So anyway, you basically just take the 13 and undo one of these and then uh, attach the grounding strap to it. And uh, there you go, you're grounded to the transmission. All right, this is the last thing to do. We are almost done, except we're crawling my carcass out from underneath here. But as you can see, this is the shift link. It just attaches to the shifter that's inside the car. And then this is the, the shift rod for the transmission. You can see there's a little notch. Well, we're gonna slide this over the top of that and then get this to tighten into that little notch or that hole right there and that keeps everything together so I can kind of figure that out here I'm going to take my eight millimeter or eight millimeter uh, wrench and that little screw or should go into that notch and everything will be connected together transmission will be in Next steps will be to put the brakes on, which we'll show you sometime later, and then the motor's going to go in. I'll be able to put this thing down on the wheels, see it again on all four wheels. I can't wait because it's going to be lowered. But again, we're not going to do all the final lowering and suspension setup until after the motor's in. But at least now we can get this thing to roll out of the ghetto garage and off the dirt.
All right, we're tight right there. That's good. We've got a nice solid connection between the transmission so we can shift it. Got our ground, transmission's in, end plates are connected, new shocks, everything's good. Dirt Lot Garage worked out pretty good today, so I am so happy I won't have to be working on this thing in the Dirt Lot anymore. But other than that, we're good for today. So thanks for joining us again on DIY German Air Cooled Garage, and uh, we'll see you later.